Good morning. I welcome everyone to our Q2 and H1 of Financial Year 24 earnings conference call. Along with me, we have our group CFO, Mr. Sanjay Gandhi, and SGA, our investor relations advisors. I hope all of you have gone through our investor presentations, uploaded on the exchange and our company website. I'm happy to state that our H1 Financial Year 24 revenue is better and has seen a formidable growth as compared to the previous years. This growth is attributed to the improved performance in Bangladesh and Vietnam operations. The demand scenario in the US uh, still remains muted with the retailers liquidating their inventory during this holiday uh, 23 season and controlling their new purchases for spring summer of 2024 seasons at this moment. This could pose a short-term dent in the demand, thus leading a comparatively muted growth in the second half of our year. However, our multinational presence, both for the manufacturing and sales, our diversified product offering, robust design, and a strong customer relationships has put us in a better position globally, making us a preferred vendor to most of these customers. Our new manufacturing setup in the Central America and relationships with the existing and prospective strategic customers will help further um, in our growth trajectory. The overall long-term industry prospects looks positive with the possibility of UK and EU, European Union FTA with India and the extension of the ROCTL scheme for the post-March uh, 2024 period. This should boost the Indian exports for the garment and textile industry. Overall, Pearl Global has also been able to offset the impact of this demand slowdown because of the business which has been rerouted from China under the plus, uh, China Plus One policy, followed by the large brands and the retailers across the globe. Our company has finalized a dividend policy wherein we will be declaring a dividend of at least 20% of the consolidated profit after tax in a given year to our shareholders. The board of directors of the company have declared a second interim dividend, which is also a special dividend of Rs. 1250, 12.50 uh, per equity share for financial year 24, considering the continuous improvement in the business of entire group over the last few quarters. On another hand, uh, ICRA has upgraded our long-term and short-term credit rating from ICRA triple B plus to ICRA A minus, and from ICRA A2 to ICRA A2 plus. The rating upgrade factors in the consistent healthy performance of Pearl Global over the last two years despite the evolving demand slowdown in the U.S. market or other key markets. And also amongst the, uh, you know, um, in between the inflationary pressure, which is affecting the disc discretionary spending of our customers. With this backdrop of global macro challenges, we are focused on the geographical diversity in our customer base. And we feel that this should help us to maintain our overall business share and the operational efficiencies that we strive for. Bangladesh uh, as a country uh, has their wage revision, their wage board has proposed an increase in their minimum wage. This happens once in five years. The country is due for elections in January 2024. So there is a condition of protests which is creating some disruptions at various locations of Dhaka. While three of our factories had no disruption, and working smoothly. One of the location where one of our factories is located, uh, we are seeing some protests. It continues to work, but we did let go of our workers on certain days or declare a closure on a few days if there is a concern of safety of our workers. So that's uh, the update from my side. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Sanjay Gandhi, our group CFO, who will run us through the financial performance of the company. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Pallav. 
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our quarter two NH1 FI24 earning conference call. Coming to the financial and operational performance of the company, we have reported the highest ever H1 performance. Like Pallav had already mentioned, that to mark our continuous improvement in performance, we have announced a special dividend of rupees 12 rupees 50 paisa per share, which is 125 percent of the face value. This will amount to a total cash payout of approximately 27 crore. We have received the total dividend approximately 10 crore from our overseas subsidiaries, which is being used to pay out this special dividend as well. On a consolidated basis, H1 FI24 revenue grew 8% year on year, 2 rupees 1854.8 crore on account of better product mix, owing to strong order group for out of year products, improved capacity utilization in Vietnam and Bangladesh. H1 FI24 includes revenue of rupees 72 crore from integration of Alpha, which was not part of consolidation in H1 FI23. Adjusted EBITDA margin, excluding ESOP expenses, stood at 8.8% for H1 FI24, which was 180 bips higher year on year. ESOP expenses for H1 FI24 stood at rupees 2.9 crore. H1 FI23 had no ESOP expenses. Finance costs for H1 FI24 increased from rupees 31.3 crore in H1 FI23 to 43.5 crore in H1 FI24 on account of increase in factoring costs for receivable financing. PAT for H1 FI24 stood at rupees 86.3 crore versus 62.3 in H1 FI23. EPS was rupees 40.5 in H1 FI24 versus rupees 27.5 in H1 FI23. For quarter two FI24, our consolidated revenue grew 12% year on year to rupees 960.6 crore from rupees 860.3 crore in quarter two FI23. Adjusted EBITDA margin stood at 8.3%, which was 220 bips higher year on year. PAT grew 51% from rupees 25.9 crore in quarter two FI23 to rupees 39 crore in quarter two FI24. On a standalone basis, revenue for H1 FI24 stood at Rs. 476 crore versus 628.4 crore in H1 FI23, a decline of 24% year on year. This was on account of shifting of sale for customer to competitive location like Bangladesh. This helped us increase our revenue in Bangladesh owing to our multinational presence. And the overall impact is neutral from the group revenue perspective. The revenue were also impacted by the reduced demand from few customers owing to weak demand environment. We are in discussion to add two, three strategy customers in India. Adjusted EBITDA margin for H1 FI24 stood at 6.2% versus 6.1% in H1 FI23. PAD stood at rupees 12.8 crore versus rupees 23.6 crore. For quarter two FI24, revenue dropped 23% year on year to rupees 218.5 crore versus 300.5 crore. Adjusted EBITDA margin stood at 4.2% and PAT was at rupees 1.2 crore. Our strong performance is reflected with our strengthening balance sheet. On a consolidated basis, our network as of September 23 stood at rupees 753 crore. Gross debt declined to rupees 374 crore versus, four, four, versus rupees 4 for 8 crore as on March 23. Next gearing ratio improved to 0.04 times from 0.21 times as on FI23. Return on capital employed calculated on TTM basis stood at 30.8%. Margin money earmarked as LC payment is excluded from capital employed calculation. Net working capital days on TTM basis, trailing 12 month basis, stood at 13 days. Receivables stood at 30 days. Inventory days were 33. Payable days were 50 as of September 23. On the capital expenditure side, our CapEx plan across geographies for the FI23 is approximately 120 crore plus. 
out of this 120 crore plus 50 percent is for capacity enhancement 40 percent is for upgradation and 10 percent is towards the maintenance already incurred capex is around 60 per 60 crore where capacity is 45 percent upgradation 45 percent and maintenance 10 percent thank you we shall now open the floor for question and answer thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with the question and answer session Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is in the line of Keshav from Raksan's Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, sir, firstly, what has led to the inventories correcting, uh, correcting so much between March and in this quarter? So, um, I would like to uh, take up this question, Pala. So, inventory has reduced. So, if you look at outer beer segment, you know, for Vietnam, largely, the most of the most of the shipments are for fall and winter order, which gets completed by September end. By June, the, we start building the inventory from April and May onward. All the inventory gets liquidated by end of September for, for overseas operation like Vietnam. Especially, and also in Bangladesh, there have been a shipment which were really expedited on the, at the behest of the customer, and that has resulted in the uh, inventory liquidation overseas operation. In India, there has been a, you know, there is a lower inventory in line with the revenue reduction, which has been there around 25% in quarter and quarter. So is it uh, in any way indicative of a slowdown in the coming quarters? No. I think uh, what uh, Sanjay just explained is that uh, the seasonality of the business that we have, uh, especially uh, for the outerwear, which is a high value item, uh, and that's what it is produced. I think most of the production of outerwear starts uh, in in our Vietnam operation. We have seen that it starts uh, building up from February end onwards, uh, slowly. And most of the major shipment is shipped out in the first quarter and the second quarter of the year. So that's that's one of the impact that uh, we will see every year uh, from that part of the business. And uh, the second one, again, which uh, what happened last year, we were holding certain inventory at the request of, of the customer to be shipped out this year because there was an over-inventory situation uh, with the customers last year. So that also is something that you have seen that has moved out from the Bangladesh. These are the two examples uh, which uh, uh, he just mentioned. We are not seeing this inventory coming down because of the slowdown of the business. Uh, there has been a few months uh, in countries like India where we faced a little bit of uh, slow in terms of our uh, sales and production uh, in the month of, uh, uh, at the end of this quarter, like September, it was a little affected. But that's not uh, resulting in a, a big drop in the inventory, I would say. Okay. And so lastly, the muted growth we've spoken of in the coming quarters. Can you talk a bit more about what kind of a hit we are foreseeing? In H2? See, we as a company uh, built up all the strategies for uh, year on year growth of at least 15 to 20 percent. And that's the trajectory that we would like to follow. Uh, but what has happened in this kind of last year, this year, the kind of uh, major, major macro factors that we have seen, whether because of war, slowing down uh, of the economies in certain parts, uh, the high inflation uh, resulting in the discretionary. Um, spending uh, getting reduced. So those are the things that we are seeing an impact because of which we are not able to grow at that rate. Um, so far, uh, for the H1, uh, we are still maintaining uh, almost about 78% of growth that you have seen, uh, which uh, we would like to maintain in the second half uh, as well. Uh, but yes, uh, it's the situation is not uh, that good that we can cover up uh, in the next year, uh, next part of the year, and get to our target of 15% plus. 
so that's that's what uh, we are seeing at a macro level um, strategy wise what we have done is we have looked looked into the various diversification of our customer base uh, and whatever you know the strategic customers who give us some kind of forecast on the long term so when we see certain drop in that numbers uh, we immediately uh, work on the second tier or the third tier of of, of the customer uh, segmentation that we have created uh, in our pyramid and start approaching them uh, to uh, push for that extra growth of the business that is uh, required for our growth. Um, this also included uh, some new inclusion of customers. And this particular year, my focus has been outside of USA as well. That means uh, Japan, Australia, uh, or European market which where our exposure was low. So we are definitely increasing our exposure in those uh, markets as well. So in a way that compensates for the decline that we would see from our existing customers of US, if I can compensate with, with the numbers from the other locations. So that has so far worked pretty well for us. And uh, I foresee that same would continue for the second half of the year. Once again, like I don't uh, expect to get back to the 15%, but most probably we'll end the year either flat or a little bit of up, as we have said, uh, between 5% to 8%. Let's see how, how we can close this year. Understood. That's all from my side, and a uh, very happy Diwali to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmas Capital Management. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and congrats on the great first half numbers where most of the other listed players had shown some decline. I'm kind of surprised at the commentary because now we are hearing most of the people saying that, um, you know, inventories at the larger retailers uh, have already been depleted and they are seeing much better demand going ahead in the second half. So why is our commentary different from the other two, three listed players? So uh, what, how we are seeing the market, especially like if I talk of US where there was an inventory situation. So most of the retailers were uh, placing almost 30 or 30% 30 plus less business on the last couple of quarters. Now what we are seeing is that they are definitely increasing from that, um, I would say from a minus 30, 35 range, they're coming out to a minus 10, minus 15 range. Now why this is happening? Uh, one, uh, everybody is conservative at this point of time. They're not going gung-ho and uh, ordering more or compensating, uh, like, you know, the drop in inventory and immediately going for a higher inventory. No, they're not doing that. They're keeping certain part of their uh, margin or a certain part of their money uh, budget for reacting in the season, how the market would be and how, how much and what inventory that they would be bringing in. Certain budget have been reallocated to the nearshoring as well. So this is the two definite trend that we have seen in most of our US retailers. So that's one of the reasons that we are, uh, when we say this, this is what we consider and saying. Right, so so when they were uh, ordering 30% lesser or uh, previously, you had delivered revenues in the first half broadly, I mean, 900 to 950 crores on a quarterly basis in that range. Now they are ordering from less than 30% to you're saying now 15%. So it's a better situation relatively. Uh, therefore, yes, sure. maintaining the range that you have already delivered in the first half on a quarterly basis, is that something that will be tough for you in the second half? No, I think what we have, is, uh, if you see like, you know, from, from a growth target that we had of 15% plus, we are less. So that's where, like, you know, my benchmark is more from there. When I say that, okay, we will be maintaining uh, the kind of numbers that we are doing now, that similar similarity or uh, parity between the last year H2 and this H2, that's something we are confident of maintaining. No, sir, though, why I'm checking that is because last year H2 is a much softer base. You had H2 was hardly 750 no, to 800 close of top line. Now, if you yeah. were to maintain your first half quarterly base, of 900, 950 crores, there's a significant growth in second half implied of 20, 25%. So unless you're saying that, uh, uh, you know, that there's a certain seasonality which is adverse in the business in second half, because my understanding was second half is usually better for us. 
uh, then I, I'm just a bit confused on this. What is the range that we're talking about in terms of revenues? Compared to last year, I'm saying that you see one one was what was the total base of last year. Compared to that, if I have to mention any number, then I am at this point of time forecasting a similar number for this uh, current year, with a very minor up upward, which will be maybe like you know five to seven percent. So that is something that we are still maintaining. Um, yes, the first year benefit, uh, first uh, half benefit that you have seen. Second half, like you know, the first uh, three months, uh, we have already like at this point of time, uh, we have all the numbers and we are seeing that. And uh, the the second, uh, that means quarter four, booking is currently happening. So yes, overall, definitely it's a positive compared to what we had seen earlier. Uh, but just to say at this point of time, uh, confidently that it will be a 15% plus. I don't see uh, that confidence in the market as of yet. Okay. And in terms of margins, I mean, there's been a substantial difference in first quarter versus second quarter. Last three quarters, you've delivered gross margins of 49 to 51% odd, sometimes even 53. But there's a sharp drop to 44% odd margins, gross margins this quarter. So what has led to that? See, one of the things is that as soon as the market becomes soft, there is definitely an overcapacity situation. Uh, so the prices definitely uh, the uh, it becomes the buyers can negotiate much more. So that one effect definitely comes in, and uh, the other uh, would be the various other macro factors that we are continuing to see uh, how the inflation and other things that will continue to affect us uh, both. Uh, some of the region, like for example uh, Bangladesh, uh, the wage revision would be happening um, or is happening at this point of time. Uh, in India also, like we are seeing uh, the dollar advantage that normally would come year after year, like at this point of time, we had seen a slowdown on that. So those those are the effects of macro factors will continue to uh, continue to happen. Just to add, you, you know, know, on the margin front, yeah. just to add on, quarter two FI23 was 45.8% and quarter two FI24 is 44.6%. I think our comparison, which we have been always mentioning, is that has to be on a year on year. The sequential quarter is not something to compare because the product mix, the customer mix get changed. And with that, therefore, the quarter on quarter, year on year is a much better comparison than other thing. If you look at Abita also, the last year quarter to FI23 was 6.1% and now they are reached 8.3%. So it's almost 50% in improvement in Abita margin. So we are maintaining that what Pallav just mentioned about the year-on-year -year quarter comparison, even this year, we will continue to show the improvement for the rest of the year as well. Overall, what we have given the guidelines in the beginning of the financial year, that our revenue will be neutral or 5%. We are saying now the revenue may be in the increase in the 5 to 10%. At the bottom line, what we have achieved, we said 8.1% what we achieved last year, full year, will improve on that. But we definitely said, despite the macro challenges, we will maintain at least and will improve on. Trend as of now shows that we will improve it and will continue to improve on that as we head into the S2 and the next year. That's right. This last question, I mean, on the finance cost, I mean, we have 374 crores of debt, but we are also holding some 330 odd crores of cash. I'm just trying to understand your cash management policy. Why are we giving almost 88 crores of finance cost? which is a sizable amount of your PBT, when you yeah, can so, pay back the debt. Sure, 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 absolutely. I think uh, the two, three aspects of this question, what you mentioned about, first is on the finance cost. See, finance cost comprises the three components. One is the interest on term loan, then interest on the working capital, and then there is a factoring cost. Now, interest, we know across the board, across geography, the interest on term loan has increased. Uh, long-term term loan, right? The term loan is long-term loan has increased, and that has impacted the finance cost across geography and across industries also. The second part is on the working capital. In short-term working capital, has also interest increased. However, because of our cash realization, we have kept the debt level to a uh, significantly low. Overall, debt has come down short-term by 88 or crores. Um, in line with our liquidity business which has come in, so we have kept the debt at a low level. So the increase in interest cost has to some extent has been offset by a reduction in the debt level. So that has been the second aspect. Third is on the factoring cost. 
Now, in line with our strategy of de-risking ourselves from the credit exposure, we know very well the challenges which retailers in U.S. are facing. So, and then we are able to get a non-recourse financing to de-risk ourselves from the receivable risk. And also to add to the liquidity, we are not stopping any non-recourse financing program despite the cost increase by three, three and a half percent. So that is the major chunk which is sitting in a finance cost and leading to increasing cost. So despite our, even if we bring the debt to zero level, the finance cost on the receivable will keep on increasing there because we would like to have the receivable kept at a low level to maintain our working capital position. The fourth, you mentioned about the uh, cash management policy. See, we have a plan about capital, capital expenditure, which I just mentioned in my uh, opening commentary. And these CapEx plans are ongoing, and then there is evaluation also which keeps happening towards the growth of the company. Third, we have also framed the dividend policy, uh, which mentioned very clearly 20% of the PAT will be declared as a dividend. In line with that, there is a dividend which is getting declared. So we are allocating cash and the capital in line with the dividend policy, in the growth policy, and also on the looking at an opportunity for the inorganic as and when it materializes, we would looking all those options as well. Got it. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue for more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the you next question is from the line of Priyana Junjanwala from Elara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, so my question was related to um, uh, the geographical mix of revenue. Uh, with respect to manufacturing locations, you've, uh, your uh, India exposure is coming down. Do you see uh, why is it coming down? Why did you do you mention that you know in you have moved uh, some orders to more competitive locations than India? Just trying to understand that comment. So you see, like you know, uh, if we talk of uh, how our business is, we are in five different locations of of manufacturing, and uh, depending on the customer's need and on certain product, like where we can uh, produce much more competitively. So we took that decision. Uh, last year, uh, we had certain uh, product that we had made uh, in India, uh, where this year we found that if we do out of uh, of another location like Bangladesh, uh, we could get a benefit. So those, those are the decisions that we'll continue to take uh, uh, in future as well. So that's that's the advantage that the infrastructure that power that we have. Uh, it does benefit uh, our customers as well as uh, our own strategies as well. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, India numbers would continue to go down or India business is not in priority. We do have plans for India and we are marching ahead uh, uh, quite solidly on that path, I would say. Oh, that's helpful, sir. Uh, the second question on um, uh, your uh, customer mix uh, today: How much would be top five percent? Uh, top uh, five uh, customers contribute to your top line, and um, how has the new client addition ramped up over the last one one and a half years for you? And uh, do we see this slowdown that you have mentioned? Uh, uh, largely because of existing customers or something and new customers are making up for it or is it that uh, new and old customers are relatively uh, facing uh, hiccups on inventory management across the board so you see the fluctuation of demand or the inventory situation that happened uh, i think it majorly affected uh, the us market in the last one year of course, during the pandemic, I think all the markets were affected, but uh, immediately after the pandemic, U.S. Uh, had definitely uh, been very aggressive in terms of their buying uh, because the consumer ten trend uh, was uh, definitely higher uh, immediately after the pandemic. Now, that uh, has slowed down uh, since 2021, uh, 22, I would say, and that resulted in some kind of over inventory situation in U.S., so which I think is now getting corrected. Most of the extra inventory that the U.S. retailers had uh, would be consumed uh, in this holiday season, which is this October, November, December of, uh, of sales. So going forward, I don't see much of uh, over inventory situation in any of the U.S. retailers. Uh, compared to that, the other markets, that is uh, what we have seen in 2022 and 23, 
uh, that uh, markets like Japan, Australia, they were like absolutely slow earlier. So that picked up momentum. Uh, Europe has been stable. Immediately after the war, definitely there was a decline of about 24-25%. Uh, but now they have been more or less stable. Year on year, if you look at the uh, imports that most of these countries have done uh, over the month of uh, July, August, September, uh, we see a decline. So that shows uh, the you know the, the conservatism that is there in terms of their uh, buying plans. So that uh, led us to correct our own strategies and whatever decline that we could forecast or receive the forecast from our existing top clients, we are trying to compensate that by going into other regions or pushing uh, certain other regions where our exposure has been low. So that's how like we are compensating in terms of our own strategy. Uh, one part of your question uh, you had asked is uh, um, top five customers contribution. Top five customers. Top five customers contribution continues to be more than uh, seventy percent in our organization as of now. Uh, so as, uh, but you see, like top five customers means like much more strategic relationship for us, and that's why like we continue to get some kind of visibility of their buying pattern or their buying budgets over the next few quarters. So that helps us uh, to you know plan our strategies accordingly. Okay. And uh, how is the um, FTA country that we signed, uh, so India signed FTA with uh, Australia and uh, UAE, so how, uh, how is our exposure in improving, in declining, I mean, how is our exposure to those countries and how is the demand that you are facing from that those particular regions? So, Australia is definitely a focus, but compared to uh, US, it's much smaller market. Uh, so even like you know if if a customer how, uh, who we had added last year, uh, if that customer even it grows by 200 or 300 percent, the number would be quite insignificant compared to when we talk of the U.S. market. Uh, but yes, we are seeing uh, considerable growth and a uh, lot of uh, energy and focus in the Australia market. In uh, Japan also we have seen the same. Uh, Europe also we are seeing some increase. Uh, UK where like we have an uh, FTA, which might come in uh, very sooner than later. So there, in that market, we are seeing a good traction at this point of time. Uh, we have been doing a lot of business uh, for Europe and UK through our Bangladesh operation. So now we can see that there's a renewed interest uh, from, from those customers for India production. So that definitely is benefiting us. Okay, okay, that's helpful, sir. And uh, just asking the last question on receivable days. We've seen receivable days increasing for you uh, this half. Uh, what would be the key reason for the same, and will it normalize back to lower levels? Um, receivable days are 30 days um, in H1. I mean, the, if you look at historical, it has been around 49, 50 days. Um, so I think it will remain around 30, 25, 30, 35 days reasonably. Uh, okay, this is normal. There is, there is no customer uh, saying that we would want to uh, repay a little later with this. No, it's, 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 it's the customer rent. Yeah, it's uh, normally done. Between 25 to 35 days is we expect to move forward. Okay. So that's because of also the factoring that we are doing. Uh, because most of our uh, receivables are definitely factored. Okay. Okay. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Gajaria from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, sir. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. And congratulations on a great set of numbers. So, just want to check clarity. Oh, what sorry is, to interrupt. Uh, uh, Mr. Gajaria, your audio is sounding very muffled. May we request that you use the handset mode while speaking and not the speakerphone? Uh, yeah, I am on the handset mode. Uh, uh, so your I'm audio is not, no, sir, your audio is not clear. Just, just a second. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I'll come back in the queue. This. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is on the line of Nishit Shah from Ambika Fincap. Please go ahead. Yeah, this is Dhruv here. Uh, hi, Sanjay Pala. Congratulations on a really good set of numbers. My first question is on your uh, capacity in Guatemala. When is that uh, plan, uh, you guys plan to commission? No, we are shipping from Guatemala already. 
But we have already shipped to our customers. So that's so operational. We were putting a new line right there. We took over a plant, a small plant, which was running a few lines, and right. we are adding more capacity to that factory. So that's we are doing in stages, in three stages. Okay. Okay. And my second. So that uh, commissioning part, commissioning already like you know our customers like you know uh, premium customers that we have bought in. So that uh, we have started shipping from uh, from Guatemala. Yes, like to uh, break even and to generate more revenue uh, over a period of uh, next one to two years. So we have that plan. We are increasing the number of loans uh, in phases, and that uh, thing will continue to grow. Uh, the plan will continue to grow. Right. Uh, my second question is, uh, what kind of uh, margin hit do you envisage because of the wage hike in Bangladesh? Because what we hear is probably there will be a 40% hike and considering Bangladesh is your, uh, you ship almost 45 million pieces per annum, which is your largest uh, in terms of capacity. What kind of margin hit do you guys envisage because of that? So, uh, uh Impact would be definitely more than 40%. So I think uh, the wage board has uh, recommended about a 56% hike, uh, I think as as recent as uh, yesterday. And uh, there are, the, the election is happening this particular, uh, like I think uh, by January, we'll see the election in Bangladesh. So at this point of time, it's a perfect uh, condition for a lot of protests and all happening, where the workers or certain unions are saying that we need much more. And, uh, uh, of course, like uh, what we are seeing is about 56% as of now, which is being talked about. Uh, that would uh, also get some kind of compensation from uh, other advantages, like you know uh, the dollar uh, rate has been advantages for us. That something will compensate to a certain extent. We are definitely modernizing and putting more automation and other things to compensate uh, even further. And as you see, like you know the kind of factories that we are running there. Uh, talking or uh, servicing the clients that uh, are in our portfolio, we do pay uh, wages which are much higher than the minimum wage. So the impact of minimum wage uh, may not in that certain percentage will impact us. But yes, there would be uh, a net impact in terms of our uh, wage portion. Uh, we forecast it to go up uh, around 15% definitely. Now, this 15%, how does it get compensated? One would be uh, dollar advantage, second would be uh, more efficiency and productivity through automation and uh, other benefits we would like to uh, bring in into the production. And net impact in terms of uh, numbers, Sanjay, what would be the right number which can say as of now, uh, between 1% to 2%? Yeah, you're right, Pallav. You mentioned uh, clearly that though the increase which is pronounced by the wage department in Bangladesh is around 56% to 1,200-500 taka from, as against existing 8,000 for all the uh, entry, even the new entry level. For us, the many of the tailors, skill labor are already in range of that or slightly exceeding. So the wage bill per se may increase 15 to 20%. The, as a percentage of the turnover, it will have around 1.25%, 1, 1 which will get mitigated with the devaluation of Bangladesh Taka, which is already expected around 8 to 10% more from where we are right now. And then the productivity and automation process which we have done uh, to really comp will, 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 will also compensate part of it. And there will be certain um, renewable, sustainable initiative which have been, for which the CAPEX has already been incurred, that will bring in saving in energy consumption and that should help also in offsetting this increase. And plus, of course, there will be negotiation and discussion about with the vendor, with the buyer to really look at that. So, as of now, you know, these are the mitigation measures we have. We see that challenges, we see that disruption, but yes, the overall the strategy to counter that is also in place uh, to ensure that our margins in absolute terms are really not impacted um, to a great extent. There may be small impact, but we don't see, we should, we think we have a strategy in place to really address that and we should be able to implement that. 
Sanjay, we had a vision to reach the double digit margin. So when do we achieve that? Is it delayed by a couple of quarters because of this? Can we say that? Uh, so do you if you see the current quarter performance as well from a 6.1 we reach 8.3 percent to right. first our point was that we should once we have achieved last year 8.1 percent our endeavor was to make it sustainable in excess of 8 percent i think to large extent this year we have we are on course to achieve that we should end the year in more than 8.1 percent plus now the definitely the target is to reach to a double digit abita um, i think with as uh, the next year coming in uh, with the, all the demand macro macroeconomic environment getting stabilized i think it should be possible for us to reach that number sooner um, so i don't say which quarter onward but definitely i think uh, uh, we are optimistic of achieving it in fi 24 24 25 and let's see how quarter 4 of this year goes you know um, you know the quarter four normally is when the demand really picks up and we should have the um, really good summer and spring season and that should also define the our trajectory or approach to our double digit abita and uh, palab just to emphasize on this bangladesh issue is your muted guidance for the second half particularly q3 coming from the extent that there is some disruption in bangladesh this bangladesh disruption uh, may continue for uh, november december period because of the election uh, but let's see like so far like we don't have uh, any backlog or uh, any backup that has that is needed so far things have been quite under control but yes what we are hearing is that uh, there are protests uh, in some areas there have uh, some workers got killed Uh, during this protest and all so that i think as a third world country and what we have seen uh, in the earlier uh, years of wage revision and elections so not very unusual as of yet uh, but yes like no i won't say that my uh, conservative approach is only because of bangladesh i i would say that these are things have something like which we can forecast in our business certain things that uh, we should be able to when we foresee something then the whole approach is to what what are the strategy that we have to uh, you know put in place so that we can mitigate those risk or those things that we can forecast a uh, major thing is what's happening uh, in the macro world i would say uh, we had an earlier like one war which was going on now the second war has started that definitely gives uh, you know certain amount of conservatism Uh, when we speak to our uh, customers and and the consumer sentiment also like you know uh, it's quite contradictory at this point of time the last quarter uh, us underwent a 4.9% jump in their gdp which was unprecedented nobody expected that still if you look at a uh, most of the ceos or other uh, management of any company nobody is very very upbeat about uh, uh, you know with that kind of number people should be in a very high position at this point of time i would say so that's that's something like we are not uh, seeing as of yet uh, i have been uh, interacting with the customers very very closely and in fact uh, this particular year uh, i have put in that extra effort to be really close to all our customers uh, top management so that we know exactly what's happening so my conservation uh, is is more from that angle Uh, so yes uh, definitely things like you know what we discussed with pulkit uh, that uh, things have improved in terms of inventory uh, people are looking for uh, growth in business at this point of time but yes like whether we are completely in the green area as of now like we had in uh, some part of 21 22 i am not seeing uh, that uh, positivity in the market as of yet so naturally like we have to make sure that our strategy is uh, you know securely in place and uh, we continue to march with our uh, objectives that we have and something like which we can control very well so that's why uh, the kind of numbers that we are showing as of now right and this is my last question on uh, guatemala in terms of productivity how do you compare them with uh, the likes of vietnam bangladesh and india very similar to vietnam because if you talk of productivity and the wage both uh because it's not a not a cheap country uh, the uh, the uh, wages of the workers are similar to vietnam uh, 
the productivity and skill what i'm seeing is compared to vietnam the scale is not uh, as big as vietnam the uh, total sales of that country so our total exports is in the range of uh, 2 billion uh, to 2.5 billion dollars so otherwise it's very similar at a smaller scale Thank you for answering all my questions and all the rest for future quarters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varun Gajaria from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Uh, yes. Yes. Please proceed. Uh, because the last time around there was some problem in the line. So anyway, uh, just wanted to track back. Uh, what is our What are our capex plans right now? In case I've missed it so far. is there or do we have any capex lined up now uh, now that we will be executing our uh, quarter mara lines in the next few quarters and yeah so so at the group level we are looking at a capex uh, in excess of 120 crore plus which is planned for financial year 24 across geographies uh, like in indonesia we have uh, already incurred the 100% of the capex in guatemala Uh, 40% of the capex has already been incurred um, in bangladesh around 70% of the capex has been incurred in india uh, there is a fac- facility expansion capacity expansion which is happening in chennai factory that is also undergoing i mean there is only 15 20% we have done so far so this is about the capex plan we have so capex will have three component which i mentioned earlier one is for the capacity expansion almost 50 55% of this amount is for the capacity expansion uh, which should start generating revenue from um, next financial year gradually it will calibrate by the end of the next financial year it will reach it it should reach it uh, good capacity uh, utilization level then there is a um, upgradation facility now upgradation also include the capex which is incurred for the sustainability and automation of fact automation at of the machinery at different location at different factory um third is on the maintenance capital which is like machines are getting old and they need to be replaced and some repair and maintenance which has to be carried out and leasehold uh, improvement in the in the, in, in various location so these three parts are there on the capital part right so uh it's also uh sorry to interrupt sir gajaria we are unable to hear you Uh, uh, I'm audible. So your audio is breaking Hello. up. Uh, Mr. Gajaria, your audio is breaking up. Excuse me one second. Yeah, I'm audible now. Order. Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, can I get a split of uh, of the capexes then uh, in each of the region, please? Sorry, I. Uh, that is pending. Capex which is pending. Yeah, or uh, uh, in the in the pending one hundred twenty one hundred twenty crores of capex in FY twenty four, right? So, uh, and in in each of the regions around forty percent in Guatemala, seventy percent are in uh, in uh, in Bangladesh. So, can I get a split of uh, how much we are doing in every uh, in every region, or how much is pending in every region? I would I would like to just mention it that you know out of this around uh, 55 60 percent capex has already been incurred 40 40 45 percent will be incurred in the rest of the year and different geographies will have a different stage of completion Indonesia is already done Guatemala is 50 percent Bangladesh uh, there are two fact one factory which everything is done another factory has 30 uh, percent uh, uh, completion which is a more of a capacity expansion by 25 30 percent. in india also there is a capacity expansion which is taking place and then plus there is a um, there is a automation of the factory automation of the machinery and maintenance capex so automation and maintenance is already incurred um, on the capacity expansion is what i mentioned about 20 30, 20% is what we have already incurred 80% will be incurred in the rest of the year okay and uh, with quarter or with us expecting with us expecting us to come back in xy25 uh what is the order book or at least uh, the revenues that you ex- that you are expecting from the guatemala facility now that uh, now that uh, there is a shift in neoshoring also so uh, how how is that panning out 
Yes, so in our filing when we declared this acquisition uh, joint venture in both Guatemala, we mentioned in two to three year time period, it had the potential to reach 20 to 25 million dollars. We are on course to in that trajectory only. We are still maintaining those guidelines and I think we, we should be able to achieve that. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, John, any any challenges that you are facing in uh, in Vietnam right now, or uh, is or uh, that still uh, that still strong enough to look at, uh, in yes, terms of uh, in terms of say, demand no, or or wages for that? So you, you see, like you know, uh, for us, like we have strategized for every location uh, in terms of our capacity fulfillment, and that I think we are strongly marching. So when I'm talking about a conservative uh, approach uh, of the global market, uh, we are not saying that we are underbooked or uh, we have a dearth of orders at this point of time. What we're talking about is uh, the growth. We had uh, in, in recent past, we have shown that in the year on year growth has been like as high as 70 to 80% also. So this is not that year that we are talking about as of now. Our growth would be limited to maybe between five and 7% on an annual basis. Uh, from each region, I think uh, we are strongly on path uh, in terms of uh, uh, the the, uh, the strategy that we have and the capacity that we have. We are quite confident of fulfilling those capacities, whether it's Vietnam, Bangladesh, India, uh, and Guatemala. Guatemala is still insignificant, as as you can understand from uh, Sanjay's numbers. Yeah. So it's still small, but yeah, it will be uh, over the next two years. It will become more and more important, uh, as you will see. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. And congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequin Invest. The current participant has placed the call on hold. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, we'll take that as the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for your closing comments. Thank you, everyone. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. However, should you need any further clarification or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team or SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on the call. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Pearl Global Industries, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.